Hello there, Nicholas Campion here from First Formations. And in this video, we're going to be looking at 12 self-assessment expenses that you maybe didn't know that you could claim. Uh, as always, this video is part of our Whiteboard Thursday uh, video series, where we take a look at all of the aspects of running UK limited companies. So make sure you subscribe to our channel if you want to keep up to date with all of our insights, advice, and inspiration. But for now, let's get going. So running your business uh, isn't always easy, especially where accounting is concerned. As a business owner, you'll have, to, you'll have a range of reporting regulations and requirements to fulfill for both HMRC and Companies House on behalf of your company. But what some aspiring entrepreneurs may not realize is that when you start your own business, you also need to register for self-assessment. Self-employed sole traders, limited company directors, shareholders, and LLP members, all of these are obligated to register for self-assessment and in turn to send in self-assessment tax returns to HMRC every single year. And based on their earnings, most individuals will need to pay income tax and national insurance contributions on their taxable income. The amount you owe will vary dramatically depending on how much profit you made uh, in the previous tax year. Fortunately, uh, the UK government appreciates that running your own business can be an expensive endeavour. That's why you are allowed to deduct the cost uh, of some of these business expenses from your profit and thereby reduce the amount of tax you owe through self-assessment. So to kick off our list of 12 self-assessment expenses that uh, you may not have known that you can claim, I will be starting with number one, and that is office supplies. If you are having trouble finding business expenses to claim on your self-assessment return, well then you don't really need to look any further than the desk in front of you. HMRC will allow you to claim a range of expenses pertaining to your office supplies, including your desk phone, your mobile phone, your fax machine, uh, postage costs, business stationery, printing costs, uh, any computer software that your business uses for less than two years, and any computer software that your business uses and makes regular payments to uh, in order to renew the license. You can even claim for your laptop and tablet uh, or home computer, but only in so far as uh, it is used for business. That means if you have purchased a family computer in the previous tax year uh, that you're only using for, uh, for business 50% of the time, well then you can claim that cost of that computer as a business expense on a pro rata basis. For some uh, bigger items like uh, uh, computers or expensive software, uh, you may find you need to claim these expenses as capital allowances. So number two on our list is donations to charity. If you gave money to charity last year, you should be claiming those donations as self-assessment expenses on your tax return. All donations made by individuals to registered charities or community amateur sports clubs are 100% tax free. This is called tax relief and how it works depends on how you choose to donate the funds. Typically, charitable donations are made through a gift aid uh, or directly from your wages or pension through a payroll giving scheme, land, property or shares, or through your will. Charitable uh, tax relief rules are, uh, also apply to sole traders and partnerships, but not for donations that are made on behalf of limited companies. Number three uh, is mileage costs. If you drive a car or van uh, for work, you can claim money off your tax bill for every mile traveled. Now you'll need to be conscious, of course, that uh, of the mileage permitted because there are going to be limits on here. It is also worth looking at other travel expenses that you can claim on your self-assessment return. And allowable business expenses here include things like vehicle insurance, repair and servicing, fuel, parking, uh, hire charges, vehicle license fees, breakdown cover, train, bus, air and taxi fees, hotel rooms and meals uh, on overnight business trips. 
That being said, it is worth noting you cannot claim for non-business driving or travel costs, fines you incur while driving, or any travel between your home and your regular place of work. Number four, legal and financial costs. When calculating your self-assessment expenses, you should also include any costs associated with hiring an accountant, a solicitor, a surveyor, maybe an architect, or basically any professional that you've paid to assist you. Likewise, you can claim costs for professional indemnity uh, insurance premiums, as well as a range of other bank and insurance costs. Uh, allowable expenses here uh, also include sort of bank uh, overdraft and credit charges, interest on bank and business loans, higher purchase interest, leasing payments, and alternative finance payments such as Islamic finance. If you are using cash basis accounting, be aware that there are limits to the amount you can claim in interest and bank charges on your self-assessment form. You are allowed to claim any legal costs associated with buying property or machinery, although if you use traditional accounting, you can claim uh, for them uh, as capital allowances instead. Similar to travel expenses, you are also uh, not permitted to claim any legal or financial costs that uh, you've incurred as a result of you breaking the law. Number five, unpaid invoices. This is probably one of the most beneficial and unused expenses that you should be claiming as a business owner. If you are using what is called traditional accounting, HMRC allows you to claim for any amount of money included in your turnover that you aren't planning on receiving. What this is called is bad debt. And the only prerequisite uh, for including, uh, including it in your expenses is that you must be sure that these invoices will never be recovered from a customer in the future. You aren't allowed to claim uh, for any unpaid debts that aren't included in your turnover, uh, are related to the disposal of fixed assets such as land, building, uh, or machinery, and those which aren't calculated properly. It is also worth noting that Bad debt cannot be claimed on self-assessment forms if you are using something called cash basis accounting. Now this is because uh, you've not received the money from your debtors and because cash basis accounting only records the um, uh, income on your return that you have actually received. The sixth one here, the cost of marketing your business. HMRC will allow you to claim business expenses for any advertising you've done in newspapers, directories, bulk mail advertising, any costs associated with free samples uh, that you produced and distributed, and of course, web hosting and maintenance costs. Of course, there are a few exceptions to the rule. You are not permitted to claim for, any, uh, for entertaining clients or suppliers or event hospitality expenses as part of your annual self-assessment return. Number seven, and we're gonna move on to the other side of the board now and get ready for this because number seven is your clothes. Now, you are not allowed to claim the contents of your entire wardrobe as an allowable expense, but there are certain items of clothing that you can claim to reduce your self-assessment tax bill at the end of each financial year. Now, permitted clothing expenses here will include things like work-related uniforms or protective clothing or maybe costumes for actors and entertainers. Unlike travel expenses, you, uh, you are allowed to deduct the entire cost of work-related clothing from your profits on your annual tax bill. Unfortunately, you can't claim for everyday outfits that you choose to wear to work. To qualify as uh, a business expense, these clothes have uh, got to be necessary work-specific items of clothing. Now, number eight, staff costs. If you employ permanent uh, workers, seasonal employees, contractors uh, to help you run your business, you can claim a wide range of expenses associated with their employment, uh, including employee and staff salaries, bonuses, pensions, benefits, agency fees, subcontractors, employer national insurance, and business-related training courses. 
There are a couple of staff costs uh, HMRC does not view uh, as permitted business expense. For example, you are not allowed to claim costs associated with a nanny or a childminder as an expense. The ninth self-assessment uh, expense that you might not know you could claim is subscriptions. If you uh, are subscribed to any professional bodies or trade publications that directly feed into your job, then you can claim the costs of those subscriptions as self-assessment expenses. Permitted expenses include a subscription to any trade professionals or academic journals. Likewise, a subscription or annual membership to a professional organization or union will also apply as a permitted expense. Now, you should note that any payments you make to any political party do not count as claimable subscriptions. Likewise, you can't claim personal subscri uh, subscription expenses like gym memberships or glossy magazines. It is also worth noting that you should not claim donations you made to a charity uh, as a subscription, even if you are donating on a subscriber level membership. These expenses here can be tallied up as charitable donations, which have their own set of rules and which we uh, very briefly touched upon over on this site. Up next at number 10, your mortgages and utilities. If you work from home, you've got a whole range of self-assessment uh, expenses you should be claiming. Although there are some crucial caveats you need to bear in mind. You can claim uh, a portion, a proportion of your gas, electric, water, broadband, and telephone bills as allowable expenses when working from home. However, you must calculate how much of each bill actually applies to your business. For example, if you work from home in a five-room house, uh, for this purpose, uh, kitchens and bathrooms do not count as a room. And only one of these uh, five rooms is used exclusively for business uh, purposes. Well, then that means that you can claim 20% of your annual bills as self-assessment expenses on your tax return. The same rules apply to your mortgage interest, but not capital repayments or annual rent costs. If the room serves another purpose, say for example being a spare bedroom, or you only work from home one, uh, one day a week, uh, you need to apportion the costs associated with the, with the room according to the business use. Now HMRC does not uh, provide exact guidance on how this should be done. You simply need to apportion the costs between the, the, the business use and private use on a fair and reasonable basis. It is worth bearing in mind that if you sell your home, um, capital gains tax will apply for the part of the property used for business unless it serves a dual purpose. So for this reason, it's, uh, you know, it's usually best to avoid having somewhere in your home solely for, uh, used solely for business purposes. Number 11 here is council tax. A lot of self-assessment users tend to forget the, about council tax when calculating their business expenses. But in the same way that you are permitted to count a portion of your mortgage interest and, uh, or rent or utility bills against the cost of your tax bill, you can also factor in part of your council tax bill. The same rule applies uh, regarding how to calculate the amount you're allowed to chalk up as an expense. If your home office accounts again for 20% of the space in your property, then you are allowed to claim 20% of the costs of your council tax uh, on your self-assessment tax bill. And finally, the 12th self-assessment expense that uh, you probably didn't know that you could claim is the flat rate simplified expenses. Now, if all the self-assessment uh, expenses that you should be claiming on your annual tax return, simplified expenses is the easiest. The clue's in the name. HMRC allows for a no quibble, flat rate deduction for sole traders and partners in a business partnership who work from home for at least 25 hours per month. The flat rate will depend itself on the amount of actual hours of business use per month. It does not include uh, broadband or telephone expenses, so you can claim these costs in addition to the flat rate. 
While simplified expenses are quick and easy to include in your self-assessment tax return, you may find that uh, you, you've miss, you're missing out on the opportunity to, to deduct more business costs from your tax bill. HMRC's uh, online expenses tool will help you determine whether it's better to claim simplified expenses or calculate um, the actual costs uh, of working from home. So then what's the bottom line? At the end of the day, there are loads of perfectly reasonable self-assessment expenses that HMRC will be willing to accept as part of your tax return, particularly if you're using simplified expenses. That being said, it is crucial that you are able to prove that uh, these expenses are valid. That means you need to keep uh, records of all of your business expenses as proof of your costs. You don't need to send these records in as proof of expenses when you submit your self-assessment return. And indeed, many people will never be asked to see theirs. But if HMRC does choose to look into your accounts and ask to see proof of your ex uh, expenses, then you've got to make sure that you have them to hand. And that's everything. There, so those are the 12 self-assessment expenses that you can and should claim for. Do remember that the rules around self-assessment expenses change quite frequently. You can view the most up-to-date information for the tax year in our dedicated blog post on this very topic. And you can find a link to that post in the description below. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. And don't forget, if you want to be the first in line to receive notifications for whenever we post new videos just like this one, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Cheerio.